Yeah, so I just quickly want to introduce and say something about what Solar is, just for you to give a bit of context um, uh, from where we uh, work. So the uh, Solar, the South African Center for Digital Language Resources, is um, a countrywide research infrastructure. It falls within a, a program called SARIR, the South African Research Infrastructure Roadmap, uh, that's funded by, uh, by the government, Department of Science and Innovation. And the idea is that we um, are going to try and boost digital language resources, digital humanities, that part. Uh, so we have, um, like I said, it's a countrywide organization. We have a hub uh, at Potchefstroom uh, that's kind of linked to the Northwest University. But we also have several nodes, and each of these nodes have their own uh, expertise. So there's C-Text, um, it focuses on, on um, so computational linguistics. Um, there's Iselda, which is um, a multi-organization uh, um, organization <laughs> uh, that's focused focusing on language testing. There's University of Pretoria that does um, a terminology. Um, uh, sorry, no, that does uh, digitization. UNISA does terminology, and CSIR um, does mostly speech. So we have a range of topics, all related to. Uh, kind of digital uh, language resources. Uh, we also collaborate with, with external um, organizations in the country, but also uh, internationally. Um, so that's just to give you a bit of a, um, information on the organization itself. Uh, Content-wise, we run two programs. One is the digitization program that focuses on the creation of uh, linguistic resources or computational linguistic resources. Um, I think we actually have a slide on that, so you can uh, go to the next slide. Um, so this, uh, this program uh, focuses on um, kind of collecting and making digital um, uh, language resources, so they're analog versions of language resources, so pieces of text written. Uh, so we digitize them, uh, we also make them uh, available, so you can go to a repository and you can actually download and use these resources. So it's um, uh, on the one hand data uh, language collections, but it's also tools that you can use to um, to analyze uh, language resources. So computational linguistic tools, and we try to make them as available uh, as possible, so open access uh, if at all possible. Um, and we also help people make available these language resources. So what do they need to do to make this available? We have this repository. Um, and we, they can upload, so people can upload their resources and we can then make them available um, to, the, to the overall public. We also have a set of what we call technology portals, uh, essentially websites where you can directly use different tools. So you can upload your text and analyze the text, these texts or search in uh, large text collections, language collections, um, machine translation is there as well. So really trying to make available these tools and resources for the, well, I guess mostly um, uh, researchers um, who want to analyze these uh, languages. Uh, can you, another, can you go to the next slide? <clears throat> so the idea is that um, people use these resources um, are probably working in the field of digital humanities, the broad field of digital humanities. Uh, so the second program uh, tries to create awareness and provide support for digital humanities as a research field in South Africa. So at the moment, a lot of people work in the field of digital, human digital humanities in South Africa, or at least they don't realize that they do. Uh, there is a small um, group, uh, kind of group community of people working in uh, natural language processing, computational linguistics uh, in South Africa, but there are quite a few people interested in what they can do. So humanities or social sciences researchers interested in uh, using uh, computational tools to, um, to boost their work so they can ask new questions and uh, analyze larger uh, data collections, for example, but they really have no clue uh, where to start. So they know about humanities or social sciences, but they don't know too much about the possibilities of the computational tools. Um, so why within this program is to um, to show them what tools are available, what, what, what um, uh, language collections uh, are available and how they can use that in their research. 
Um, so what we've done is we've organized several colloquia. Uh, actually, there's a, a digital humanities colloquium, monthly colloquium still ongoing. We've organized workshops, conferences, just to increase the visibility um, uh, of digital humanities uh, in the country, but also to provide support um, uh, on, on these tools and to try and build networks and collaborations in this field. So the idea is reeling off this humanities and social sciences researchers, right? So trying to get more computational skills uh, in them. Uh, can you go to the next slide? I think there's one more slide. Okay, so what we've done uh, specifically to try and build uh, research capacity, digital humanities research capacity is in the past we've organized training events. Um, so mostly at universities. Uh, where people can register their free events and they're hosted, uh, so training events hosted by um, uh, researchers from the hub. Uh, so we have for one of the, for each of the official languages in South Africa, 11 of them, we have a researcher specializing in that language and they all have experience in, um, in some digital tools. So they can actually provide training events and also give examples in their own uh, languages, so hopefully making it more relevant for the uh, for the research. Now these events were actually quite successful. Um, people really enjoyed going to these um, events, but we had a feeling that they were um, kind of limiting in in the sense that there were ad hoc events. People did go to them, they enjoyed it, but then they go away, and well, we had the feeling that that, that knowledge is lost again. So there's no no follow-up sessions, there's no checking up on how they're doing, um, if they run into, into problems. We also don't know if these people who are attending these events are actually teaching these tools to their students. So we don't know what the further impact of these training events are. And we have the feeling that the, the information that we're sharing to them in a way is kind of limited. So there's no, um, how do you say, the kind of ripple effect on on um, on further students, but also we don't really know if these people are actually using these tools in their day to day work. Um, we also don't so they also don't have uh, easily easily accessible uh, help if they're working on these tools and they run into problems. There's no kind of network that they can uh, they can fall back to. Uh, and this is essentially the reason why we started the escalator project. I think the next slide introduces the escalator project. Uh, and this is essentially where we are, uh, are working on now, uh, what we are working on now. And now is the time for Anelda to take over and I'll, I'll mouth for, for now Thanks. at least. Thanks very much, Manu. So we don't have much to say about Escalator at this stage. It's a very, very early stages for the project. Um, it will run, it started in December, 2020, will run for the next two and almost two and a half years. Um, and we have a website, we have an updated website, web link, I don't know how that one slipped in, but that website is available and we're hoping to share um, all our experiences and the progress of the, of the program and any information that might be useful to our community on the website. We've also created the DH Africa channel on the DH Global, the Digital Humanities Global Slack to create more of a, a place for African uh, digital humanities community members to share experiences, opportunities, and resources. Um, thanks, Menu, for sharing that link. And then we have a Slack, uh, more focused, a Slack workshop more focused on South Africa specifically, the HCSAZA. And anyone can join that who is interested in communicating about opportunities, projects, resources, skills meeting the community. Um, and then we've got Twitter, the same DHCSAZA, and you can contact us via that email that you know by now. And as Menu was saying, we have the resource researchers and students in um, humanities and social sciences. And we now are starting to um, get access to many more tools, many more communities, resources, infrastructures, data sets, and what we want to do with the escalator program is to bring humanities and social sciences uh, researchers and students together with other communities um, who already have more experience with computational uh, research, computational practices, 
along with those who are involved in data management um, and really create this community where where it can have an impact on our society in the end and not just stay academic. Um, the Digital Champions program is our flagship program or oh, the flagship initiative as part of um, Escalator. And that's why we're here today. And we really are going to listen very, very carefully to everything you say, because we are just setting up this program and we can learn, you know, from everyone who has practical experience. We also have a very um, strong focus on um, uh, on using the lessons that we learn in the program to adapt the program as we go. So that we don't do evaluation at the end of the program in two years time and say, oh, we should have done something different, but that we adopt um, and adapt as we go. So we have a lot of things that we need to do um, going forward. Most of all, we need to explain exactly what it is uh, that we're doing in the escalator and how people can get involved. Um, and that should be all of that should be ready but before the end of the month and then we hope to kick off with the champions program in about a month and a half month and a half two months um, depending on how things come together um that's all from escalator for now and we'll we'll talk more about it um, throughout the rest of the the session 